Hi everyone and welcome to another ServiceNow Express 101 session on the concept of using Okta for your cloud-based single sign-on solution. So with ServiceNow Express comes a free Okta application to be used to integrate your current LDAP or AD environment right into ServiceNow. So there's a lot of basic questions we commonly receive regarding different pieces of configuration. You know, how can I maybe whitelist IP addresses? How can I go ahead and provision users with specific fields for my AD? How is all this being managed? How is it being set up? So I'm going to go ahead and answer those base questions in today's video. So the first question is, I have my ServiceNow instance. How do I even activate the ServiceNow Okta plugin? So you simply need to come into your system administrator homepage. Under the user administration section, find a section that says Okta plugin and then you're going to go ahead and activate the Okta plugin. So we're going to go ahead and let this run now when I press activate. And this is going to make sure that all your items for getting this Okta integration going is going to be natively installed within ServiceNow. So we're going to go ahead and reload this form here. And now we've got the Okta application active. So our next step is going to be to configure this Okta plugin. So this can be achieved by searching for under your user administration section, this SSO provided by Okta. So you're going to need to fill out a few key pieces of information. If you're a new customer, you're then going to go ahead and put in your unique subdomain. So important to leave that HTTPS reference here in that link that you're going to be setting up. So if you don't have an Okta instance, simply name this prefix here before .okta.com to something that falls in line with your instance URL. Most users find that they're going to make this identical to their current instance URL. So for me, I would do this initial and put it in like that. If you're an existing Okta customer, there's an API token that you can find that you can go ahead and insert in here. But we're going to continue assuming that we're new customers. You then put in your own company name, what the Okta administrator first name and last name is going to be as well as the Okta administrator username. So this is going to be an email address. You're then going to sign that Okta administrator, their username and password, and then choose a password recovery question. So after all that information is filled out, you're going to go ahead and press yes to enable this Okta external authentication when you're ready and set up. And that's what's going to tie in those Okta users. So enough on the ServiceNow side. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually hop into a configured Okta admin dashboard. And we're going to talk about what you're going to do. So the first step is you'll see that you've got that name prefix that you set up in servicenow.okta.com and we're going to come in and log in here. So I'm going to use my login name that I've already set up as an admin user and I'm going to log in from here. So what you'll notice is on the upper right after you've logged in as that admin user you've got this admin button here and that's what you're going to press to launch into your admin Okta dashboard. So from here, you're going to have a nice dashboard of your current state of applications, recent activity, usage information, and so on. But also a nice getting started guide, which is great when you're new to Okta. But we're going to focus on those key questions that I see coming up within our ServiceNow customer base. So under our application section, what you'll notice is that ServiceNow Eureka and later releases application has already been provisioned in there. So you simply need to click into this. So from here, this is where you manage all your users who are coming in from AD, their access to ServiceNow. So we're going to walk through these different tabs and what they actually mean. So from our general tab, this is where you can see and edit the information for that application label, more of the admin side. But an important one to note is this app embed link. So if you want to have a link that users click on, that's automatically going to query and then sign in to ServiceNow with using that SAML connection, then you simply want to copy paste this link. I commonly advise users, go ahead and put that Okta SSO link right onto the desktop as a simple shortcut. So when your users click into that, it's going to log in querying against that Okta connection and then have the user then signed in. So for me, that login was tied in with the system administrator. So let's head back though on the Okta portion of the discussion and take a look at the other key items. 
So something to note also is there's a lot of sign-on questions in terms of what's being used, what is the setup for items such as SAML, but more importantly, what about sign-on policies for maybe doing restrictions based off of IP addresses or restrictions based on who can log in from where. So that would be under your sign-on policy rules. You can simply add a new rule here, give it a name, and then this is going to specify exactly who it applies to. So for your case, you know, if you're using just Express, just ServiceNow, you're going to use the users assigned to this app. This is where the conditions are going to be met. Then if the user who's attempting to connect to you is maybe we want to do some whitelisting and take out users not on the current network. We'll say if they're off network, so you're defining what your company IPs are off to be on network in this public gateway IP section here. So if you want to let only companies coming from your connection access, you would put in the IP ranges here and those IP addresses and then select if the user coming in is off network, then we're going to go ahead and under our actions section, we're going to deny it. So very simple workflow, who does it apply to, what is the criteria, and then do we want to grant or deny access based on that. So the next common question involves provisioning. You're going to want to simply come in and go ahead and enable provisioning features. So we're going to press edit and we're going to enable those provisioning features. And what you'll see is this is a set number of fields that we're pulling from your AD and then we're going to be able to map that to specific fields in ServiceNow. So what you see here, these are the field names in ServiceNow we're mapping to. So the first name from AD, we're going to map that to our ServiceNow on the user table, the first underscore name field. For email, it's going to go to the email field and so on. So this is where you can map for your users, if you have that information in AD, onto the user records that get provisioned in ServiceNow. So you can also choose if you want to have the reverse be applicable in terms of importing users into Okta. When they're created now, you can do so from this user import section. But the main one that commonly is asked for is turning on this create user section and this update user attribute section, which means when your users are being created and their fields updated in terms of your AD, we will push from Okta those relevant fields you've defined here to those fields on the user table and service now. So after you've got that list of people that you've pulled in from your AD connection, you can easily manage their status here. And at a high level, this is a very easy way to go ahead and if an employee needs to be off-boarded, to simply deactivate them and take them off this ServiceNow application. At the same time, instead of managing individual users, you can manage groups. So you can also push groups from your AD groups into groups in ServiceNow and that really makes it easy for when you assign roles to groups in ServiceNow you can then push your groups from your AD into those groups in ServiceNow and have your users automatically inherit those roles that way. So the final uh, quick touch on to note is that when you're getting your connection, your AD connection set, so to speak the people in Okta that you're assigning the ServiceNow Express application to, which will then, if you have provisioning enabled, automatically make them in ServiceNow, you're going to go ahead and set that up under the People section, where you're going to specify and pull all those either individual users or directory sets from your current setup. So very easy to do the setup. Set up your people, set up the application with the configurations you want and the provisioning per how you want, and then you're good to go. So hopefully this was a quick introduction session to make you familiar with some of the key concepts and questions that are asked regarding ServiceNow and the Okta integration. And if you have any comments and requests for future topics, feel free to leave those in the comments below.